Welcome, one and all, to another edition of the Tifa Show with Luby here on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Happy New Year to you. We are brought to you by Water Cleanup of Florida. It may be dry on the outside. We haven't had rains for a little bit, but that doesn't mean things won't pop up in your home or office like leaks. Water Cleanup of Florida will eradicate those problems. 954 579 0356 is the number to call. Like I say each and every time, with over 60 years of combined experience, that's a lot of time and a lot of experience. And with their licensed, certified, insured contractors, they cover every angle when it comes to your home or office with any kind of water issues. And they'll make the old look new. They'll make the issues go away and look brand new. 954-579-0356. WCUFL.com on the socials at Water Cleanup FL. And check them out on Google. Over 75-star reviews. Water Clean by Florida will keep your home office dry and looking beautiful when it comes to any water issues. 954-579-0356. If you have the schmutz, they have the guts. It feels like I'm a broken record at this point. The Dolphins, again, did not have the guts. Just need one win. Just needed one win, and they'd be in. They got the loss from the Jets to the Seahawks. Problem is... The Patriots, who are abysmal on offense, and their defense is good but not great, didn't matter. The Dolphins were a disaster. Yes, the injuries have piled up. No Tua. Teddy Bridgewater is supposed to be the, the, the conservative, safe quarterback. Throws an interception for a touchdown, and that was the end. Dolphins didn't score again. Dolphins, oh, Dolphins scored late. It made it interesting. Did not get a, a non-take kick, and the Dolphins lose. To the Patriots. Patriots now control their own destiny. Now the Dolphins need to beat the Jets at home and get some help from a Patriots loss. Feels like we are where we seem to be each and every year with the Miami Dolphins. Hoping to get in the playoffs. Not much else to hope for. We talked with Mr. John Kinjemi, Peak Skin Playbook, today about the Miami Dolphins, state of the Miami Dolphins. Um, is there anything they can do to fix their issues on the Diva Show with Luby here on the Five Reasons Sports Network? Always looking sharp and one of our favorites to talk to about anything, uh, especially during the Pigskin Playbook. Brought to you by Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill, uh, marker 104 of the Overseas Highway in Key Largo. The handsome one himself, uh, Mr. John Kajemi. John? I, I've been worried a little bit about you. I'm glad you got your voice back, but the eight-mile yeah. hook has been bothering me for oh, oh, no, a weeks uh, now. And, it's uh, ugly. Uh, I, I do think they get this ninth one against the Jets. I, I mean, I, I know people thought they were going to, you know, beat the Packers, that that was going to be it. Uh, that didn't go well. Uh, last week against the Patriots, unfortunately, two out again, and, and that didn't go well, although Bridgewater was decent for a good portion of the game. But he, he always seems to have that thing like the USC defense where <laughs> there is going to be the play that, that collapses all of the good and negates all of the good that he did throughout the ball game. And, uh, you know, th- there it was, that pick six where he got hurt. Yeah, it turned, turned the game completely yep. around. Yep. And, that, and that was the play you you kind of circle with that, you know, black Sharpie, and you go, wow, you just – you if that's incomplete, you know, it, it's okay. Yeah. You know, if that's tipped to the ground, it's, it's no problem because the Dolphins – you felt like New England wasn't going to be able to do anything offensively you weren't. To, right. to, to win that game. You know, if you put it on them and you kept winning field position like the Dolphins did at the beginning of the third quarter, you know, New England comes out, they go three and out. Pilardi doesn't punt it really well. Uh, Dolphins gain 10 or 12, 15 yards. Same thing. Miami doesn't do much, but then New England does less than that. And you get the ball on the on the plus side of the fifty yard line. You're thinking, okay, this game's going to now turn. And you know, after the Dolphins give up a field goal and they're still up fourteen ten, uh, Duggan comes in. I, I think that was the seventh offensive score for the New England defense. That was, that was his third pick six yeah. of the year. Uh, the one guy playing in the middle of the field, he's almost like a rover position where he's just reading the quarterback's eyes and he's. He's able to go anywhere he wants. It, it let him right to the football, and and then nobody can make a tackle. And to combat the the, the injury, you know, to the finger, the the you know the pinky finger of Bridgewater, you got Skyler sitting on the you know sidelines. It's fifty degrees, but still, you haven't done anything in you know an hour and a half. He's been on ice for a while too. Yeah, so it, always a tough situation for the backup to the backup to go in. 
Yeah. Uh, the Dolphins did that at three or four positions that day. Quarterback, left tackle, safety, cornerback. I mean, you're playing you're playing guys in, in a game, a meaningful game, that where you line up on, on a goal line stand after a timeout, you, you're not covering a wide receiver. You know, the, there were yeah. things that, that added up into that game where the Dolphins still had a legitimate chance to win, but you couple all the things that we just touched on, plus nine penalties for 71 yards, not going to win. Such ugliness. No, well, and, I, it was ugly. And I get they have injuries, and I understand their injuries. They're on their third left tackle, and their offensive line was already shaky. I understand that. But at this point, we're, we're looking at every team. They have a lot of injuries. The Bills have played with backup secondary the entire season. Like, once you get to this point and the guys have been gone, it's just – what's beat what has been like and I and I sung his praises I liked the hire and he seemed fun um but he hasn't adjusted at all like Mike McDaniel has not made any adjustments and they still whatever the quarterback situation is they have lots of guys that have talent on this team and Mike McGizicki might not fit their offense but the dude can catch balls like Raheem Mostert and Wilson are good at doing multiple things you have you have Hill you have Waddle they were non-factors in this game, and I don't care how good the Patriots defense is. This isn't the freaking Ravens <laughs> of 2000. Like, I, and whatever their issues are with quarter, I get it. They don't. They have got not changed anything. And like, and, and to me, I know it's his first year, and I, we poo pooed it. But this is for a team that's had a lot of bad December's and a lot of bad collapses. This, if it's not number one, it's top two or three, and and. At some point, it has to fall on McDaniel, and and the, and I don't know what he's doing. It feels like he's doing nothing about it. Like he's just sort of he looks lost when you watch him in the game, and it's sort of frustrating me. And where I'm like, these are two the Packers game and this game they should not have lost, even with the injuries, even with all that, the game was in their hands. Like and it, they they just kept oh we're gonna keep punting ah screw it. It's like what is going on with this game? Like the, the it's just it's just frustrating to watch the team go down the drain. Well, especially in a second half where where we talked about coming out in the third quarter, you're gaining field position. You go down and make a great drive. Teddy kind of push passes the ball into the end zone yeah. to Mostert, and it's a it's a touchdown. And you're up seven points. Going okay, now now we're going to play defense because Mac Jones isn't going to do squat. They really can't run the football. They don't threaten you down the field. But, but yet the Dolphin defense, you know, we, we're always pinning it on the offense. The Dolphin defense has not come up with a big stop in the second half of games since the Baltimore game, I don't yep. think it was. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the goal line stands and the, and the fourth and ones and all the things that happened early in the season for that defense that made you feel good about it. But when you think about beginning of the fourth quarter against New England, it's third and five. And you know, Mac Jones finds Myers wide open for 25 yards. And now it kickstarts, you know, the yep. drive. Yep. Now you get another third down, you get a PI with Cross and mauling. I can't remember <laughs> who the receiver was inside the five yard line. <laughs> it was like and, a- and now you've got a first and goal at the five. So you've given, you know, one. And they have you, nobody uh, on uh, Myers. Yeah. Yeah. He, one, he's out there say, on the left okay, side and they, he's waving here, here, here. Yeah. And they snapped the ball, and the linebacker couldn't get there in time. But, uh, yeah. I mean, an easy score from there. And and that that really, I think, turned the second half and maybe maybe turned the game because New England was like, man, these this is supposed to be one of the better teams in the AFC. If we win this game, we control our own destiny. All of a sudden, you know, you start believing you can win that game. And yeah. they did. You know, they, you know uh, they get a sack. They get a fourth and 16. And, and I think we check it down. You know, instead of maybe who yes. cares the interception there, <laughs> just throw the football down the field, right? Yeah. And, you know, but Seeler got a sack later in that sequence of downs. You find Kasiki late. You have a chance with an onside kick, but I think the, the league stats were over yeah. in terms of onside kicks uh, successfully by the kicking team this year. So, boy, it squandered opportunities. You know, you, you need the USC and, special and teams case. out there for that to work. <laughs> yeah. Where exactly. they spread like the Red Sea and then just allow the guy to come 20 yards down the field and <laughs> scoop the ball up. So I think LSU a, just scored again game. as well. Exactly. Oh, man. I mean, I, that was the only game I lost yesterday in my personal bookmaking venture after my friend hammered me to the tune of 8-1 and one oh, on the NFL card, oh, which I saw that coming because I was looking at the games going, I mean, uh, th- this guy's got this locked up here. I, I'd love to reverse this. Yeah. Uh, but uh, to lose that USC game, I mean, uh, that was – 
to the point Tulane. spread, much less the game straight up. I mean, uh, just incredible. And uh, we'll get into all, all of this college stuff. Uh, I just wanted to finish up a uh, thought here on the Dolphins. I mean, uh, th- this represents to me just a monumental failure. Uh, I, I, I don't know that nine and eight and even making the postseason represents something no, that no, not at this point. I, I'm thinking, wow, th- this was, was tremendous progress because we had so much, uh, you know, a reason to hope that, you know, McDaniel was on the right track. I, I think Tyreek Hill, we were talking about, you know, trades, that, that were monumental that, uh, you know, turned out to be catastrophic, like Russell Wilson, uh, where, you know, you traded away two first rounders, two second rounders, a bunch of players, and, and then e- even more considerations for a guy that you're now saddled with who appears to be completely shot and, and incapable of uh, doing uh, what, what you wanted him to do. Tyree Kill, I think, has justified, you know, what, what they exchanged him for. And uh, you would love to have this guy on a roster, but if they go nine and eight, John, uh, the same record. Same record as last <laughs> the year. Same record. <laughs> I mean, to put it in my league, what the fuck is that? I, I don't know. I don't record, know what to make of that. And, and and we need them to win a game uh, against Just a team that I, I don't know. I mean, it looks horrible right now, the Jets. But, uh, you know, they have to win a game j- just to do that. And then, well, uh, you know, you now have the Bills and Patriots. And we don't know what's going to happen uh, with that ball game. Right. Uh, you're You're playing against a team that has nothing to play for. Uh, in the Jets. So yeah. that could be good or bad because, you know. They, they played like that the last several weeks. <laughs> well, they, they, they're, they're, that's what I mean. Yeah. They have great practice at playing. Yes, at games yes, like yes, yes. I mean, they're, they're okay. accustomed to this position. So you could either play really well or, or just, you know, all over yourself. You know, you, you just don't, you don't get out of bed. But the Dolphins, you know, back to your original point about Tyreek Hill, yeah, great trade, right? Great, great getting him on the field. Made Whatever it costs. a world of difference yeah. for the Miami Dolphins team in terms of lighting up the scoreboard. But you, you really dig deeper after the surface of the trade and how he made Waddle better, how he made Tua better, how he makes the offense better uh, in terms of play calling for McDaniel. Okay, the, he's the been Dolphins, a real professional too. I mean, and, and, he's been, and a huge he's been a model positive guy. catalyst, right? Uh, for a guy that you know had uh, had know, a shady had some, past, a little bit of a checkered uh, you know uh, situation yeah. there in the past. You I don't know, remember exactly what it was, were, but you know, uh, wasn't bad. considered a great teammate uh, before, right? But and he has been a great teammate. Yeah, he's been good with the media. He's been good, you know, off the field. You haven't heard boo from him. But right. take a bigger look at this thing, guys. You might end up with the same record as last year. Maybe yeah. you get in. Maybe you don't. But the Dolphins have uncertainty at quarterback, okay, going forward. They have no cap room at none, all, none. okay, yeah. zero. They're all in for the next year and a half, two years with what they have. No picks. Um, the, the, you know, <laughs> all the you, picks. You yeah, a, throwing no draft picks. Yeah, no, no, dra- <laughs> no draft. They're, they don't participate in the draft. Nobody, and anybody wants in a trade. <laughs> you, you, you're going to have to get rid of Kosicki at, at you know, some point in the offseason. You're going to have to find, you know, can can Armstead possibly tape up and play another season? Maybe, but he might not get through as many games as he did this year. I, I think you dig up Sherman Plunkett, another <laughs> man on the left side. But, and I mean, but point being, there's a lot of there's a yeah. lot of question marks on this team for a team that was out of the gate blazing, yes, and, and then all of a sudden hit the skids after the bad teams kind of fell off the the schedule. Or the mediocre teams. Uh, yeah. throw, Detroit's a pretty good team now. But at the time, they were just finding out who they were. But that's kind of what we talked about early in the season. You know, the Dolphins were going to sprint out. If they could get two and two out of the gates, we'd be happy. They went three and one. But then, you know, they get through the lighter part of the schedule. And we said, hey, those three away games, if they can beat the Chargers, find a way to beat the Chargers because you're giving San Fran and Buffalo, who are better teams, probably the edge. They don't. They don't return serve at home against Green Bay, and yeah. then you, you know, lose one at New England in good weather. We yeah, the weather was fine. Be a bad weather game. Yeah. But uh, don't get In, in their defense, uh, Green Bay's uh, come on and played uh, much yeah, better football. Well. They I kicked mean, the Vikings you watched them in the beginning of the year, they were garbage, I mean, and, and you thought that was it, and that Aaron Rodgers wouldn't be there anymore. But uh, of late, even though he hasn't been razor sharp in these victories, Aaron Rodgers, he, he's been instrumental in what's happened, but, uh, you know, not the – same Aaron Rodgers that we're accustomed to, uh, you know, making almost no mistakes. I mean, he, he's right. thrown some poor uh, long passes, especially where you had guys wide open and missed them. But uh, doing enough there as a team, uh, they, they seem to have generated, you know, a, a momentum that's going in a positive direction as uh, they have a chance now to make the postseason when 
what were they four and eight? Yeah, at one point and, they were they were completely completely out of it, and that was the game really. The Miami Dolphins at home. Yeah, I mean, that was a big one for them. Sure, hundred yards in the first half. You felt like you were up three touchdowns, and yeah. it was only a, a touchdown. But the fumble before half, New uh, Green Bay scores, and then they come out and score in the you know third quarter, flip the game right around, and and then the interceptions down the stretch killed the Dolphins. Oh, that, that was uh, as ugly as it could possibly get. Uh, John Kajemi here. It's uh, Pigskin Playbook with John Kajemi, brought to you by Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill. That's mile marker 104, the Overseas Highway in Key Largo. Uh, Seems like we ended this place every single year. Either the Dolphins are just horrible, or they flirt with the playoffs, don't get in, or flirt with the playoffs, get in, lose in the first round. That's where they are. At 8-3, and three, it felt like the Dolphins had a shot to be a Super Bowl contender. Now, you're just hoping they can get into the playoffs period. And if they get in, they're going to get annihilated. Their defense is not good. It went from being really good last year. It's not good. And their offense went from being one of the most fun, better offenses in the league to just being average at best. Uh, they have moments, they have flashes, but to, with two or not, their offense isn't good. Mike McDaniel, I love the hire. He showed a lot of flashes early. He looks like a young guy in over his head. I mean, they haven't changed anything on offense, and the defense is totally a disaster. Yes, there's injuries. Every team has injuries at this point of the year. The Dolphins are letting their injuries totally ruin them. And Mike McDaniel has no answers for it. Yeah, it's your one. I get it. I don't think he's going anywhere. But he's not the genius. He's not the savant that we are hailing him to be. And he is on, if not a hot seat, he's on a very warm seat. And there's a lot of questions about him. A lot of questions about this team. And as it sits now, the future, which seemed to be bright, is very dim, dull, and scary. I mean, I don't mean to be uh, negative. But look, you trade away picks to get Tyreek Hill. He helps your team. But you're still not, you're not any better. Let's say you win this game, so you have the same record. Yeah, they look better. They look more fun. They look, look, it's year one, so the offense is going to get better. You don't have any draft picks to improve. Tua, who I don't think questions are on the field, actually. I think they're wrong. I think he proved himself on the field this year. The problem is the questions with the injuries are louder than ever. And now it's not ankles or hips, it's concussions. He's had definitively two concussions, and he had something earlier in the year that felt like a concussion. So he's not going to play the rest of this year. And he hasn't gotten hit. Like, he gets rid of the ball quickly, even when the offensive line isn't good. He's good at not getting hit a lot. He gets hit, like, once or twice a game, and those hits hurt him. Like, that can't happen in the NFL. So you have no faith. At least I don't. And I've been as big a tour backer as anyone. I have no faith in Tua to stay healthy. So you can't give him – you may ex- give him one more year, but you're not extending him for, like, $200 million, some ludicrous quarterback contract, when you can't have him on the field. He's, he, this is year three. He's missed four to five games every single year. And he's going to. He's proven every year he's going to miss four to five games. So you you don't have that faith in Tua you thought you did. McDaniel's not the guru we thought he was. Like, you're not firing him. He's not Nathaniel Hackett. But he is not. He is a question mark. He is. And you need a new defensive coordinator. Chris Greer is horrendous like we thought he was. He made one move. And the funny thing is, the move that was great, duh. Yes, if you can trade the world to get Tyreek Hill, who wouldn't? So it wasn't this coup. He traded a crap load of picks, paid the guy nuts money, Tyreek Hill has been great for this team. He's had a great year, but now you have no picks. <laughs> like, and all the picks he's made are horrendous. Like nothing. Like it, it doesn't work. And Phillips, like even the picks that we thought worked are still question marks. Like Phillips has been so inconsistent. Chubb, he trades for Chubb, gives up an, another pick, and Chubb, big injury risk, always hurt. Hurt again. Taron Armstead, loved it. Love the contract. Always hurt. Hurt. Multiple times this season. Like, Chris Greer's not good at his job. And those that were hailing him because he got Tyreek Hill. Anyone would have done that deal for Tyreek Hill. Chris Greer's not good at his job. He sucks at drafting. He's, his trades are usually horrendous. And his free agent signings suck. So you need to get rid of Chris Greer. You Boyer was Flores' guy. McDaniel didn't even want Boyer. And Boyer's horrendous. Like, the Dolphins, I'm, it, it's so funny. Like, a month and a half ago, there was so much promise. Now it's like, what, it feels like we're as bad as we've ever been. In as bad a spot as we've ever been in. So we shall see <laughs> if they still just need a win and a Patriots lose to the Bills, both viable things, but they've needed that for a month. <laughs> like they just needed one win for a month and they haven't been able to get it. We'll see if they figure that out. Check us out each and every morning for more sunshine and rainbows. You, we'll try and be more positive. I, it's just hard right now with the way the Dolphins are playing. The Heat have played a little bit better and they're, they're in an interesting position in the East. It's just they haven't been what we thought they would be. So uh, we're back from square one. At Square One here with South Florida Sports. We'll be back with you each and every morning, 7 to 9, on South Florida Live. The Defoe Show with Luby.
Look up on Google or YouTube, both of those things. The Diva Show with Little Be Yourself, Florida Live. Check us out on our national podcast, The Believe Network, B-L-E-A-V dot com. Search after hours. And check us out here with our South Florida content, The Diva Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. From the newly renovated sports bar to the beautiful bayside views captured at the Tiki Bar, Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill has it all. Located at mile marker 104, the Big Chill also offers waterfront dining while experiencing breathtaking sunset views of the Florida Keys. It's simply the hottest spot in the Keys to cool off. That's Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill at mile marker 104 in Key Largo. For more information, call today at 305-453-9066. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers Raw Bar and Grill in Plantation because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup, all you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers Raw Bar and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home.